Good morning, Holy Trinity. A very special and warm welcome and a very happy New Year to everyone, from all of us, from the clergy, from Parish Council. I pray that this year to come may grant you all your heart's desires and that it may be a better year than the year we've had before. Amen. We start the service by reminding ourselves that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Now let us sing that very familiar hymn, the first Noel.
Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We pray together, guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find wisdom, and in your will, your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hera, fierce Christ, Christ, have mercy. Nkosi, siya wukele. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let us call to mind our sins. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. As we remember who and what we are, what we have done and what we have left undone, may God in mercy forgive, renew and restore us to live as God intended, partners with God in a new creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Join me as we pray. Almighty God. God you, you have called upon, upon us, us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, and reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, 
according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Hear the word of the Lord. We read together Canticle 10. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Listen to the good news proclaimed in St. John's Gospel, chapter 12, and reading from verse 44. Glory to Christ, our Savior. Then Jesus cried aloud, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them, for I have come not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as judge. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated.
here we are on the first Sunday in 2022 already. Can you believe it? It's a new calendar year and new opportunities to start over await us, right? Although it is the new year and technically we are still in the season of Christmas, this is supposed to be a time for us filled with hope and promise of what is to come. But for many, sadly, this is not the case. After all that's been experienced, hope and promise may seem quite distant. The shortcomings of last year may have crumbled any sense of optimism that we had left, quite frankly. We may feel just plain, I don't know if you feel like this, just plain depleted from 2021 in general. From COVID and what losses that has brought, as well as the political challenges that are being faced in our country. We remember the civil unrest that happened in July with the looting. We have family troubles, we have work troubles, we have financial troubles, and just the list seems to go on. All of this may have us yearning for better days. And for some, these days just seem dark and dreary. But here's the thing, we're not alone. For some, if we just look back, somehow we'll see, and we just truly reflect on this past year, we'll see that somehow we've adapted through all of it, by God's grace. As much as we've had all these challenges, the question for us to think about this morning as we enter this new year is how have these challenges that we faced been met by a loving God? Well, in our text today, the writers of Ephesians and John point us to a list of blessings that are bestowed upon us through Christ. And now this is how I want to start our year off. I want us to focus on our blessings today. I think we all need that. Let us focus on our blessings so that we may see that God has actively been busy amongst us and so that we can actually draw strength from that and then just use that strength to look ahead into this new year with hopefully positivity, with renewed hope and gratitude. You'll hopefully also see that God's larger good vision will prevail in spite of the immediate problems or even the joys that come our way in 2022. In terms of our blessings, St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, begins firstly by reminding us today of the source of our blessings. In other words, where those blessings come from. He says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. In other words, God has blessed us with his might and mercy as the children of God. And we have not only some spiritual blessings, as biblical scholar C.H. Spurgeon writes, but we have all that we want. They are all ours, for all time and for all eternity. But here's the thing too, we need to recognize that they are all in Christ. Jesus is the source of our blessings, the source of receiving those blessings. There can therefore be no blessings for us outside of Christ. All the fullness of the blessings dwell in him and in him only. And so if we wish to be blessed, we need to start by firstly coming to him. We come to him because it is the will of the Father. God chose that in and through Christ he would become visible. And this is affirmed in St. John's Gospel, as we heard the reading today. 
When Jesus is quoted as saying in the summary of his teachings, he says, Whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. Knowing Christ, therefore, means knowing the Father. Loving Christ means loving the Father. Receiving Christ means receiving the Father. Christ and the Father are one. Secondly, we are then reminded by St. Paul as God's children of how we are already being abundantly blessed by God. We are abundantly blessed, as he says, through our election. We are reminded that we have been chosen by God, not because we are holy or because of anything that we have done, but chosen because of God's grace, because of his deep, deep love for us. Because we are believers and have been accepted to this be heirs and children of God, we are enabled to come to him through Christ. We are enabled to say, cry, Abba, Father. And in a way, in a sense, in our spirits, we are being lifted up within us as a child is lovingly lifted up by their father to love us, to nurture us, to care for us, and to especially console us, dry those tears of ours when the need arises. You see, we have this blessing that we have a God that is so close to us, he has not forgotten us, He hears our prayers. We are assured of that. He sees our tears. He feels what we are feeling. And because we are his, we are granted blessing upon blessing and grace upon grace. And this should be a real comfort to us, especially as we face the challenges ahead of us. Furthermore, we are reminded by St. Paul that according to the riches of God's grace that he has lavished on us, that we have been redeemed. We've been saved by the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been forgiven our trespasses. Because of his grace, we are free. Don't let anything tie you down or bind you. We're no no longer under the bondage to sin and evil. I think sometimes we tend to want to keep a record of wrongs, and then we keep beating ourselves, or maybe even beating others with that, those past mistakes. But Paul is saying to us that we've already been forgiven of everything because of the riches of God's grace. Although we need to be very careful that we don't abuse God's grace. We also need to humbly receive that grace and move on. And then we are reminded of the inheritance that we have as God's children. We're reminded that what God did for Jesus, he is and he's going to do for us. He raised Jesus and he will raise us up. He'll raise us up, not just the future and eternal life, but he'll raise us up now from the ashes that we're feeling. Because of our faith and the cherry on the cake is that we have been given the Holy Spirit. We know that. The Holy Spirit indwells each and every one of us. And the Holy Spirit is there to seal us, to seal us with God's love and keep us safe in him. We have the assurance of that security. What wonderful gifts, eh? We think about the graces that have been bestowed upon us, the blessings that God has already given us. These spiritual blessings and promises by God should give us hope and help us to live to his praise and glory, despite what physical challenges or material challenges or whatever we're facing right now. Something else I'd like to point out in terms of our blessings is that as St. John reminds us 
We have Jesus through the help of the Holy Spirit as our light in the world. In other words, he's a very present help in our time of trouble. Jesus himself says again in his summary of teachings that he has come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in him should not remain in darkness. Now we know we live in a dark world. So much lies, so much hatred, so much confusion. But as God's children, Jesus gives us the light that we need to help us, to guide us. I was thinking, it's just like a traffic light. I think we've heard this, might have heard this analogy before, but I'm repeating it. Just like a traffic light tells us when to stop and when to go, Jesus guides us. He metaphorically also flashes those warning signs at us. And like the landing lights of an airport guides us, or guides the airplane down to landing, he guides us through our nights to safe landings. His loving light is also there to comfort us and reassure us. Just like the comfort of looking at the light or looking into your window at home and seeing the light of home and you get that comfort, that is the comfort that Jesus gives us. As those that have received this light though, We don't just stop there. We are called as God's people to share that light with others. We share that light through our faith, through being careful of our speech and our actions. And this is something we can think about. I don't know if you've made New Year's resolutions already and how many of of them have been lost already. (laughs) But these are things we can think about as we go into the new, new year. Sharing our faith being careful of our speech and our actions, thinking of others and considering their needs and how we can help them meet them. And also, um, just let us be encouraging instead of criticizing. Let us be patient and give others the benefit, benefit of the doubt. Let us endeavor also in this year, and this can be a big challenge for some, distance ourselves from gossip and all that negativity These could be New Year's resolutions for us to increase our blessings. So God's people, I just want to end off today just reminding us that the crux of the matter is that we've not been abandoned as we go into this new year. Reminded that we're not abandoned, we haven't been orphaned by God in this world. We're reminded that because of God's love, each and every one of us is chosen. We've been redeemed, we've been saved. And we've been given an inheritance to look forward to and given most graciously that loving light of his son to help us navigate our days and years ahead. Because of what we are and whose we are, these are all loving blessings bestowed upon us. We just seek to focus on our blessings rather. It's a challenge. Rather than being negative and allowing ourselves to grumble, And let us not lose our hope, and especially our faith. God has generously poured out upon us so much to be grateful for. And other than what I've mentioned in terms of Paul's letter, I think another little bit of homework that we can do as we go home today and ponder the rest of this week, think about what God has done particularly for you and each and every one of of our lives. How has he blessed us? What's he done for our past situations? And then hold on to that. Let that strengthen you. Take this hope and don't, and as I reminded us, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with others so that those who are yet to come to receive and understand God's blessings may come to receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. At the start of this new year, we come to you, Lord, with the assurance that you are present with us now. Though we cannot see you, your love surrounds us. We pray for the church around the world, for those who are persecuted for their faith, not able to worship freely. Though we cannot see you, your love surrounds us. You are a God of peace, and we pray for peace in the world, for an end to violence and war between nations. And we pray for our own country. May it be a year when those in positions of authority govern honestly and with wisdom. And we say the prayer for South Africa as we light a candle. God bless South Africa, protect <coughs> us, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. We pray for our friends and our families, particularly those who live far away. Be with them, Lord, and protect them in all the trials of this life. Though we cannot see you, your love surrounds us. We bring before you all whom we know who are troubled by illness, pain, loneliness, and anxiety. Comfort them, Lord. May they know that your love surrounds them. Thinking particularly of those whom we know who have suffered from COVID or have died, we pray together the COVID prayer. Gracious and compassionate God, you are the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Direct the minds of the medical fraternity and, and all who are tirelessly working for a cure. As we start a new year, we ask you, Father, to give us, in times of anxiety, serenity, in times of hardship, courage, in times of uncertainty, patience, and at all times, a deep trust in your wisdom and love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank our viewers at home for joining us on this blessed first Sunday of 2022. We pray God's blessing and peace in your hearts and homes as you enter this new year. Amen. <coughs> 